we don't just teach the subject, uh, subject matter, we don't just teach science or maths or English, we also teach language. We have to do two things at the same time, teach the subject knowledge and teach the English language as a language. Okay? So these are the two things to remember when you plan your lesson. You, I do this and I do that. And how do I do particularly the second bit? Teachers are not really trained to be EFL teachers or EEL teachers. Okay? Then we are having learning. Okay? So how do learners actually make sense of what is being taught to them? It's very important that ma the materials I will present to you reinforcing this, the, the importance and the role of the learner in the teaching and learning process, it's not just all about teaching, it's about learners making sense of what's being delivered to them and how do they make sense of what's being taught to them okay, and what resources they can actually use. And then we have resources, yes, because resources is really important because when you teach, you obviously use certain resources and resources are going to have an impact on your teaching and impact on the learners at the end of the day. So you need to make sure that your resources are appropriate for the learners and there is a problem at the moment with non-existence of real resources for primary school children, you just have to find them by themselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we have formal tests or uh, form formal assessments. Okay? So how do learners actually demonstrate what they know or how do learners are not able to demonstrate what they know because of the way the test is structured. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. We also have a formative assessment element that links to assessment and that has impact direct on teaching and learning that's how it should be, and also indirect impact on resources, because you're obviously adjust, as you adjust your teaching to suit the needs of the learners, you're using different resources that are appropriate. appropriate. So, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to use actually formal tests, um, students work from the formal tests, to show you um, not how well they perform or how, not how well they perform, but to really show you what we can learn from that, what the data really tells us for classroom practices and how uh, we can use this information. So now then, using the tests um, to show you some of the data from my research. This is one of the SATS items from the SATS papers for science. I know they don't do it anymore in, in primary schools. They might come back to it though, okay? but it doesn't matter. That's the same principle applies to any subject. So here is a task. Give one feature of a penguin and describe how it helps a penguin to live in their environment. So we have a feature and how the feature helps. I want you to imagine that you give this question to your EEL learners, and EEL learners in the class. What difficulties might they have with this? At what levels the difficulties would they have? What can prevent them in demonstrating their knowledge? If you just look at this item. Question think about you, you would answer it yourself. You probably wouldn't say a wing or a beak or uh -huh. something. You're actually being asked to describe a quality of the <laughs> bird and of okay. the yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's requiring much more than what it seems to be, which is just a one word answer. Yes, okay. So we've identified, identified a couple of things I'm going to show you learners' performance, what, what, what the problems were. So before that, we need to remember that their ability to demonstrate knowledge in science, or any other subject for that matter, is, consists of two components. Uh, knowledge of the subject matter itself, so knowing the fact, scientific fact itself, and ability to express it in English language. So they may have the knowledge, but they may not have the ability to express it. Let's have a look at the student performance. Here is one. I asked the learners to highlight the words they don't understand. Okay? So here we go. <laughs> How can the child... <laughs> How can the child answer the question if they don't understand half of it? Exactly. So here we have clear language prob problem. We can't report on the science knowledge, scientific knowledge, because they didn't even get to that step. Because the, 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 they didn't understand the question. And this one is a very interesting one. Okay? So we have fluffy oh. tummy, oh. and it helps to keep it warm. Oh. Okay? So I want you to make a decision now, again talking to each other, whether you're going to accept it, as science teachers, yeah, whether it is okay or whether it is not, whether a student has the scientific knowledge or not. You put your hand up if you thought that scientifically the child has the knowledge. I think I put my hand up, yeah. The problem is really expressing, expressing that. Yeah? Yeah. Poor little thing knows fluffy because there are fluffy toys, so they will, would have been exposed at home or elsewhere to the fluffy. Tummy, my tummy aches and so on. So the, the two things being put together, but we understand the child means the coat, the whole thing on the pink penguin, not just its fluffy tummy, it's more than that, yes? So, but if we look at the marking scale, 
Yeah? So the first two columns, acceptable answers, the last one, what you do not should not accept. Okay? So we have coat helps to keep it warm. Nowhere else we have fluffy tummies. So in a fluffy tummies, it tells us that um, child doesn't have the knowledge. The, the reason I showed you this, ex this example to you is because I strongly believe that we need to stretch and push the kids to try and produce academic, scientific language as far as possible and appropriate to their age. So there is an implication for the classroom, encourage them to use the appropriate scientific language as part of their spoken and written discourse. Because very often we just accept the answer because we're, yes, yes, you're right, I understand what you're doing. If we're not stretching them to do it. When they come to secondary school, to their GCSEs and A-levels and university, they, they are underperforming the native speakers, okay? But also they're missing out on their opportunities to become doctors to become some, somebody else who needs science. So, so if we start building it up from the primary school and stretching them to, to incorporate this language, I don't say just throw all the academic language, all scientific language at that, that's not gonna work. But if you see that they, yes, okay, so fluffy tummy, what do we mean by fluffy tummy? Yeah, let's, let's kind of elaborate. You, you know this teachers how to do it, yes, so, so, but I think that's important because they produce this language, we accept it, so they think it's not a problem, right? They carry on doing it. Uh, and then in their tests they, they struggle. So here, I've also allowed learners to use first language. I told them, if you want to answer the questions using your first language, do so. Only very few did. I probably have five examples maximum out of 400 papers of kids having a go at doing it in the first language. This brave girl, I don't know why I think it's a girl, probably it was a girl, um, um, a Hungarian girl. So she said, I checked the dictionary, that stands for root, that stands for roots. Okay, the spelling may not be exactly right, but she's year five, okay, students. But here, the knowledge is here, yes. So um, here, it's only partial knowledge, yes. So he ha she hasn't got the second point right. But if we look at that, at, at here, th that helped her, would have helped her to score a point. If she was not allowed to do it in, in first language, she wouldn't have done it at all. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it is important to let the learners use resources, whichever are available to them during the lesson, to let them convey and demonstrate the knowledge that they have. If it's visuals, let it be, if they draw, let them draw. If they write half in English, half in their first language, that's absolutely fine. Because uh, some teachers say, all right, I don't speak that language. Yeah, I understand, there are 10 kids from 10 different countries. Of course you don't, okay? But certain things are happening internally in their heads and the first language does help them to make sense of what you're talking in the class. You don't need to understand everything, that they, you know, that they're processing kind of mechanisms, but the outcome will be much better if they are allowed to use those resources. Okay, so, um, so here the, kind of the materials are trying to address the gaps. And um, I have talked to the teachers and I have observed the teachers and asked them what kind of materials they use for year learners in primary classrooms and I have identified a few problems. that you are having as an example on your worksheet, they are providing language support and they are not supporting language acquisition as such. Okay, but language acquisition is a broad concept of how can we help learners to learn language generally better, to become better language users beyond a specific task that they are doing right here, right now. So here we have, for example, extensive reading. Give them more text, expose them to language, give them opportunities to chat. Okay? The focused language support is when you have a task and you say, I need such and such vocabulary, I need such and such phrases, so it's really focused for the specific task, the language. Okay? So in this booklet, that's exactly what we have. Okay? That's not to say it will stay like this. 
I will incorporate an element of language acquisition at a later stage. Okay? So I call these materials interactive. And the reason I call them interactive is not because you interact with the teacher, but because you interact with your booklet. It's interactive between the, my booklet and me. That's the way that I believe learners make sense of learning and make sense of the subject knowledge by actually being allowed to write down or draw anything in any language <coughs> that is relevant to them as they make sense what the teacher is presenting to them. Okay, experiments are really difficult because kids don't know how to record the experiments and they keep forgetting what prediction method and results mean. So there we have the sun guiding questions. So methods, for example, what did you do? What was your control? Uh, the, the aspect that you cut the same. What did you use? Um, why did you use the control? What did you change? Okay. So because it's consistent, and every time they do have a next topic, eventually the kids will say, "Oh yeah, I know what method is." Yeah. So if they forget, they can always go back. So they have got examples of language, language sentence starters to help them to start going. Because sometimes they just don't know how to even start the sentence. So I've I've, I've put the sentence starters from the easier ones to the most difficult ones. They have the freedom which one to choose. If they always want to choose the same, that's not a problem. But the benefit of it is that they write it all here, and then you have an opportunity to kind of formatively assess their performance. Let's say they've done five experiments over whatever, ten weeks' time, and then you've got their booklet and you flip through it, and you can see how their recording of the experiments, hopefully, has improved. So here is um, the support with the subject learning, learning of science. So they have a page where they have got the key words for the lesson written to them here with definitions. But they're not just simple definitions from the dictionary. They simplify definitions for EL kids. So I have sometimes put in brackets, uh, for example, nutrients, materials, okay, or minerals, sorry. So they have um, the simple definitions that can, they, they can make sense of. I also encourage them to use the first language to explain the definition to themselves in the way that is a appropriate. It doesn't mean they have to write a full definition. If it's a translation, if it's roots, I can say Kornia, just in Russian, okay? When the teacher talks about it, I think, oh yes, roots, I have to read the whole definition, but if it just says school, I can very quickly, just for the, the second, go back to my booklet and I'm back again with the teacher with all my full attention, rather than lagging behind. They will also have visual with labeled um, parts of it, they will have space for drawing and space for writing. I differentiate between the two abilities. If students can't really write, they can draw. And they can draw anything that they want. You don't tell them what to draw. They choose what to draw as you tell them the material. They make sense. I'll give you, I'll show you samples of students' work and the drawings that they have done. And it also can inform you formatively, yes? Because if they only write or if they don't, you don't know how they progress. You don't know how they're, what they're doing. But if you see that for the whole class, flip through 30 pages of the same, exactly the same layout, you can kind of get a better idea where they haven't understood the material or whether they've all got it very, um, uh, well, they've got it right. Okay? So then this is more kind of um, a formative assessment bit. Right following, right next page after the presentation page, they have an opportunity to check their knowledge. Okay? So there, there will be three or four questions, simple questions asked to them, exactly about the topic that is being taught. So all the material that is being checked reflects the material presented on the previous page. So it's simple, and it's meant to be simple because I want to make them believe that they can do well. It's the first step. The, some words will be in italics and blue, meaning that they can find these words in a key glossary of key terms. Okay? So the second bit here is where they, they're supposed to put their answers. The linguistic demand is minimized here because the sentence is provided, it's just certain words are missing. There are um, additional lines here um, because um, when I was trialing this with, with my own daughter, poor thing, so she had to do these booklets, and she said, oh, well, I don't want to use it, I want to write my own sentence, and I thought, so fair enough, it's even better if you do. So she, the, I provided for native speakers or more advanced TEL learners, they can put it their own way, and then this page here, you see, it falls to the back, you fold it back, so you don't see the answer. They can, if they want, some teachers will say, oh, they'll cheat, it doesn't matter. If they get the right answer, if they read it, the chances it will stay in their head better, um, higher than if they didn't have it at all. Okay? So it's not to ca catch them out, it's just to help them progress and understand the learning. And it's not threatening, because if I get it wrong, I immediately can see 
via project form, there are ticks and crosses that they can put. So it, it allows you to formatively assess them quickly. They can do it at the end of the lesson if somebody else has finished, for example. You say, why don't you do this? You can do it at the whole class on the board. So it's up to you. It gives you freedom to choose how to do it. So I also try to reduce linguistic demands um, um, when, when I'm assessing them. So because, because, exactly because I didn't want language to get in the way, I wanted them to be able to demonstrate the signs. So they had to label, they had to match, okay, they had to select the right answer. They, they're filling in the gaps, they're not producing paragraphs of text, okay. They're naming, they're matching again, they're ordering things, so the things that language is provided, so it's signs slowly, but then with the checking, and then uh, selecting again, okay. They also had a page where I give them an opportunity to just elaborate or write anything that they know about the topic. Teachers from the pilot have been using that uh, as a warm-up activity. So they'd start a lesson with this and say, okay, what do you know? And they, as a, again, you'll see samples of learners drawing and writing what they want to do. Exactly the same as at home. Um, talk to your parents what do they know about partners. When holding parents and getting them on the board as well. And also at home, this is a, an example from homework task. Again, it falls here, goes to the back. So this is the task immediately. Parents have access to the right answers. As I talked to parents and they said, I'm, I'm not certain, I'm not confident in my skills and science. But if they have an opportunity to, get the, to see the right answer, which is confirmed with what they know, uh, they might talk further with kids. And they also can see what kids are doing at school. Okay? So, and because there is a consistency throughout the workbook, they get used to it and they kind of progress through it very quickly. They just get used to the format and hopefully start using it as their immediate referral uh, to, the, to the knowledge that they gain from the lessons. Okay? And you also have free access to the materials if you want to download them and use in your class. It's, it's if you want to read more about what we've talked about, this publication's just been out in Innovation Language Teaching and Learning Journal. It's available online, so it's, that's why it's in, in red box for you to um, read if you want really in, in more depth about language acquisition, language support, and how I approach each step of um, assessment of material, you know, assessment in the classroom, and teaching subject knowledge and language support. Okay, so that's this publication. Uh, this one is not out yet, will be out soon, but that's more about um, me talking about um, um, teachers developing and using AI materials and how we can really make it better and reduce the workload of teachers doing that. And this two are just case studies reporting on teachers' perceptions during the interviews. So if you wanted to read more about the project, it's there. The best thing that I like about research with EEL kids, they always find a way to communicate back to you how grateful they are for you being there. So I gave them the questionnaires, and I'll send them for their answers, and they'll report to me. Like, you're welcome. <laughs> so thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you. Thank you.